everyone. Welcome to HSPF training by DSI. This is Anurag Mishra. We are on the video HSPF 610. How do I simulate water quality using HSPF? So let's get right to it. If you remember in the first uh, HSPF 100 course or we learned how to make HSPF models using basins and I had this uh, project Snake River and we downloaded the data using uh, basins download tool. I downloaded NLDAS data that is the meteorological data. I realized that if I download the data for multiple grids at the same time basins may not process all the data and then you may not see all the data in the WDM file. So I went ahead and re-downloaded the data for fewer grids at a time. So like this time it's about 10 grids at a time. And the data you can see quickly is here in a WDM file. I gave it a different name, NLDAS underscore WQ. We will quickly look at it. And see there are multiple constituents, air temperature, cloud cover, dew point, potential evapotranspiration, precipitation, solar radiation, and wind distance traveled. And these are the direct different direction winds that are used to process to get wind. We will cancel it and close it. Now, if you remember the watershed shape file that we prepared earlier, we will just quickly look at the attribute table editor. What we did was that we assigned a model segment to different sub watersheds. And we assigned, I think, five or six uh, meteorological uh, stations, NLS. We'll close it. Go to models, HSPF. We'll call it snake underscore WQ we have an LCD grid as land use shapefile watershed shapefile is correct stream reach shapefile is correct we also want to just for setting up we'll do include source snow simulation in this it uses the DEM data to calculate the difference between the temperature gauges then we have land use, NLCD land cover here. This file nlcd.dbf tells how much is the impervious area for each land use. Streams, this form has multiple columns. And as I discussed earlier, we should know what each column means. So we'll just skip subbasins has model segment as that tells what model segment uh, to assign to each sub watershed and in met stations so these are the model segments for x254 y171 we get the met, met station x254 y171 so this is automatically what basins assigned this met station to this model segment and you can always change it by double clicking on it and assign a different station so we'll click on ok and there's already a shape uh, same file we'll say overwrite it and it will take some time and then we'll get back as soon as the model is ready okay so it took about five minutes or three four minutes for uh, patients to make this default UCI file and we can quickly look at this UCI file in that uh, folder where it is prepared if you remember by default HS, uh, basins make HSPF files in model out folder and snake underscore WQ and this is the file that was prepared now we'll just quickly look at it in VS code and we understand how the file structure is we have gone through it multiple times so we'll look at this thing again 
And now we want to simulate water quality. So we'll go to functions, pollutant selection. And let's select all. I'm unchecking metals because that's not the focus uh, here. We just want to get general understanding of how the pollutants are simulated. Click on OK. I also want to do one thing that I want to change the simulation date. So that will be in uh, simulation time and metadata. So we want to start the simulation in 2015. One one and we can change it to 2019. 31 click on OK and save and if you see here the UCI file also got changed and if you quickly look at it air temperature snow water sediment PST pesticides it is also turned on pesticides that we are not going to look at no, sorry, pesticide is not turned on. It's the soil temperatures turned on, gases and quality constituents. So what we'll do is we'll quickly run it just to make sure that uh, the model can successfully complete its run. And it should take about a minute or so to run. While it's running, we'll just quickly look at it. Uh, see in the... Um, it has created snow flags, snow parameters, elevation. This, this is the mean elevation that it got from the DEM file. And most of the times you have to go and collect these values, these elevation values. And these are snow tables, then it's hydrologic par parameters. And now the run is finished. So let's quickly look at the echo file. So echo file will go at the end. So it says end of job. That means the run is finished. It has some warnings. So for example, if there was too so too big of a flow, and that the bed does not have any more sand. So that's the kind of thing that is happening in some of the reaches, and that's more of a calibration issue and we can always look at it when we are doing the calibration but for now end of job means the the watershed model can run for this uh, for this watershed and it can simulate water quality constituents in the next video we'll look at the parameters on the land operations and then in the following video we'll look at the parameters on the reachless operation and how they connect to the land operations thank you for your time